I want to show you some of the new features in GP2010. There's really quite a few of them. I'm going to show you the new word templates functionality, emailing documents, also how you can add user-defined KPIs and graphs to the GP homepage, and also extender data. Then we'll take a look at some of the other GP2010 enhancements. There are really quite a few of them. Let's take a look. I want to show you the new word form, form functionality within GP2010. There's two reasons that I really like this. Number one, I can make my form, whether it's an invoice, an order, or a PO, look exactly the way that I want to because I'm using the functionality within Word to produce that document. Most importantly to me, it allows me to add graphics to this report that I could not do in Report Writer. So I'm going to show you that. And also, what I like about it too is I can have as many different templates as I want. So if I wanted a different invoice, for example, for every one of my customers, I could have as many different templates and I could assign it to each customer along the way. So let's take a look at it. The first thing, let's take a look at all the reports that are available. If I go here, I can see all the reports that are available out of the box that I can use in Word to customize. You can see them there, the sales and the purchase orders. And now let's look at a specific report here. Go to Template Maintenance, and I've got a number of them already set up here. The ones with the asterisk are the ones that come with the system out of the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new one. So I'm going to hit New. I'm going to use a template. In fact, I'm going to use a template that comes out of the box. I'm going to create that, and then I'm going to modify that one. So hit Modify here. It's going to bring up Word. It's going to allow me to customize it the way that I want to. And there's a couple of things that are added here. If I go to the Developer tab, which I can invoke within Word, and you'll see the field list from Dynamics. Let me click on that, and you can see here that I've got all the fields that are available to put onto this form. I've got these different areas. I've got the related fields down here, so I can drag and drop these items onto this new form. But what I really like is the ability to add graphics. So I'm going to add a picture here, and this is a fairly complicated picture. If you used to report writer, you can just imagine what this would have looked like in report writer. So I'm going to make that a little larger. And now I'm going to save this template. So I'm going to save it in a special folder I made for my modified Word templates. So let's do that. Save it out here under Word Forms. And I'm going to make this one for Aaron Fitz. I'll make it easy to identify. I'm going to save that. Now I need to go back into Dynamics and I'm going to load that template up into this area. So I'm going to hit the plus sign here. I'm going to find that template. I believe it's right here. I'm going to pull that in. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to assign this to a company and also assign it to a customer or a class of customers if I wish. So I'll highlight this form here. I'll go to Assign, assign it to the company first off. If I want to make that the default, I can hit select, Set Default, but I'm not going to do that. Then I'm going to assign it to a customer. And I'm going to assign it to a specific customer. So let's look up that customer right now. It's going to be Aaron Fitz. And insert that right here. And I'm going to save that. Now, let's go back and run an invoice transaction. We'll print that out and we'll see what it looks like. So I'm going to sales transaction entry. I'm going to look up an invoice. I know that I already have one here. So let's take a look at it. Here's my invoice. And now I'm going to print that. I'll select the printer icon, select the invoice, and I'm going to print that. I've got an option. I can use the standard or I can use the template that I created just for Aaron Fitz. So I'm going to do that. I'll select the template, hit OK. It's going to open up Word and show me the document, and then I could print it from here. I can also print this out using email, and I'll show that functionality in another video. I can print this also in batches. If I had a number of different invoices in a batch, I could print this. They'd all come up in Word, and I could print this off from here. So you can see that this is a much nicer looking graphic. It would be impossible to show this in Report Writer. And you can see that this is a word form, so I could go back to that template. And I can modify it any way I want to. So I think when you upgrade to GP2010, you're going to really like this new word form functionality. 
I want to show you how to set up the new document email functionality within GP2010, then also how to use it to create sales documents. So let's take a look at it. The first thing you're going to want to do is make two system setups. So let's do that. Let's go to Tools, Setup, Company, and down to Email Settings. Here I'm going to specify which file formats I'm going to use in my email messages. I'm going to send them as attachments. Then let's go into the sales series here. Let's select which documents I want to send via email. And if I want to, I can send a message ID. I'm going to set that up. Let's take a look at the one I did. Here I have a subject for the email and the body for the email. You can also specify the reply to down here at the bottom. So I'm going to save that. And you have some other options down here if you want to select those as well. So those are the two system setups that you need to do in order to create sales documents and send them by email. So let's go to the customer setup. This brings up a customer list. Let's look at the customer I've set up already, advanced paper. And at the customer level, there's two setups you're going to need to do. For your bill to address, you're going to want to go in there and set up the email addresses. So open up the bill to address. We'll go to this information button here. You can see I've got three email addresses in here. You can send multiple emails, and you can see that set up right here. The next thing you need to do is go to email options down here in the customer. Tell them which document you're going to set up. You can include the message ID and then include the format that you're going to send. I've selected PDF. The system is going to turn that into a PDF document and then send it out as an attachment via email. So let's take a look at this in action. Let's take a look at an invoice that I've already created. Here it is. And here's the email information that's going to be used for this particular document. Now I can send this via email either one at a time or in a batch and I'll show that to you right now. If I want to send it as it is in email I can do that right here. Just click on that. It's going to go through the process of sending those three emails. Because remember I had three email addresses so it's going to send three messages. I can also send email messages in a batch. So let's look up this document again. It will go into the batch. Save this. Now, to send them by a batch via email, let's hit the printer icon here. Select the document type I want to send. Select that I want to send it in email. And then I'm going to reprint this because I've already printed it once. And then we'll hit print. And now it's going to go through and send those three email messages. Now that the messages have been sent, let's take a look at them in my inbox. Here's my Outlook inbox. You can see I've got six messages. These are the invoices that were emailed to me. I sent a set of email messages from the document and also from the batch. And I had for that customer, I had three different email addresses set up. So I've got six emails here. Let's take a look at it. You can see that this email here is taking advantage of the comments that was set up that supplies the subject for the email and also the body. Now let's open up the attachment. It's a PDF document. And you can see that I'm using the new word functionality to create the invoice in Dynamics GP. So you can see how easy it is to use this new functionality within GP 2010. So give it a try. GP 2010 has the ability to allow you to add a custom report to the home page. Here we're looking at GP 2010 with standard out of the box KPIs and reports. What I'm going to do in this quick little demo is create a new report. I'm going to add that to the home page. The new reports are going to be added using SQL reporting services. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to use the report builder. Go to report builder right here. I'm going to start the process here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to, collect, to select a chart type. So I'm going to select chart here. I'm going to add a new data connection. So I'm going to go to new and I'm going to use analysis services. I'm going to build that connection here. I'm going to put a period in here. It's going to look at the local server. I find this analysis cubes already out there. I'm going to hit hit OK. Hit OK. Go to next. 
So what I want to do is start building my report. I'm basically going to grab two items of data. They're going to be in the inventory area. So I'm going to open up, look at the inventory cube here, open up my measures, and I'm going to look at on hand inventory. So I'm going to open up that group there. I'm going to scroll down here, pull in the quantity on hand, pull it into my design area here, and then go down into the items here. I'm going to look up um, items by class and pull in the item class description. Now these are two elements of my report. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to select a bar chart as a type of chart I want to show. Hit next. I'm going to pull these items. I'm going to pull the class description into the categories, pull the quantity on hand into the values. Hit next. It brings up this report. I'm going to select this style here. Here's my report. I'm going to make it look a little nicer here. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff here. Don't need that. I'm going to not show that access, not show that access. Uh, let me change the title. Let me drag it up into the upper top of the report here. I'm going to change one little property here on the border. Make that none. I'm going to add a couple of filters because I have sample data here. Make it look a little better. I'm going to add a filter. And the first one is to have um, quantity on hand greater than zero. I add another filter and so my sample data has empty in it so I'm going to exclude that and now I'm pretty much done with my chart so I'm going to save it save it here and I'm going to load it up into the report server the two and then into the inventory and there's a separate special folder here that will make this report available in Dynamics GP 2010. So I'm going to load it into this folder right here and I'm going to name it and save it. Okay now that reports up on report services so let's take a look at it there. Go back to reports and services here, drill down on two, drill down on inventory, and then charts and KPIs. Again, this is a special folder. Here's my new report. Just open that up. Here it comes. There's my report right there. Now, let's take the final step and add this to GP 2010 onto the home page. So what I'm going to do is go back to 2010 here, hit customize this page, open up the metrics, I'll scroll down, scroll down here. You can see that I have my new report added on here. I'm going to add that into the list, and I'm going to move it up to the top, and let's take the customer balances off. Hit OK. Hit OK again. It's going to refresh the home page, and there I've got my new chart. So this is a new functionality in GP 2010. allows users to add reports to their home page. This is going to be a very useful functionality within GP 2010. I think when you upgrade to GP 2010, you're going to really like this. It'll also give you some exposure, further exposure to SQL Server reporting services. I want to show you some new functionality in GP 2010 that easily allows you to take data entered through an extender form and present that as a KPI or a metric on the home page in GP. So let's get started. First thing I did is I added an extender form. We'll take a quick look at it here. It's this form right here. It's a fairly simple form. I'm pulling in the item number and the customer number and then just some text fields. Let's take a look at it. Here's the form itself. I've already entered some information, so, so we'll use this information. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a view. A view allows you to easily take information from Extender. It makes it easier to report on. So I'm going to go down to the Views folder here. I'm going to add a new view. 
We name it AAA to make it a little easier to find. I'm going to add my extender form to this view. Here's the form right there. I'm going to add it in. I'm going to select all those fields and then save it. This will create the SQL view and the SQL database. Let's take a look at that view, preview it. There it is. It has all the information from the extender forms in it. And now the next thing to do is create a simple report using SQL reporting services. So I can go into SQL reporting services, go to my home page and open up Report Builder. I'm going to create a simple chart to show my extender data. I'm going to use the existing data source. And then I'm going to look up my view that I just created in Extender and use that in the report. Here are all my views here. Here's the view I just created. I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to have a simple bar chart. And I'm going to use two pieces of items from that view. I'm going to use the item number, pull that down into categories here, and then I'm going to count the support cases. I'll pull that down into values and change it so I'm looking at the account of those values. And then hit Next. I'm going to select the default style here. And here's my report. So I'm going to clean it up just a little bit. Uh, let me change the title here. And then I'm going to delete the legend. I don't need this axis or this as well. So this is my basic report. Now I'm going to save that up to SQL Server Reporting Services, save it to this site here, into the To folder, and then I'm going to save it in Inventory, and then into this Charts and KPIs folder. This is a special folder that will make this report available to the home page in GP. So I can open that up. So I already have another one out there, so let's rename it here. So now I've saved that, and we can take a look at that report. So I'll exit out of the Report Builder here, go into Inventory, go in the Charts and KPIs folder, and then look at that new report. Here's my report. It's pulling information from that view, presenting it in SQL Server Reporting Services. Now it's an easy manner to take this report and put it into the GP homepage. Let's go back to GP, go into Customize this page, go into the Metrics area here, if I scroll down, I'll find that new report. Here's a new report here. I'm going to pull that into my area here. Let's move it up so it shows at the top. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And now I've got that new chart right on my home page. It's pulling that extender data through the view and delivering it to my GP home page. This is new functionality in GP 2010 to allow you to easily create this. When you upgrade to GP 2010, I really think you'll find this useful. Finally, I just wanted to list the other GP 2010 enhancement features that are available in the system. You can see the financial features here. This is distribution features. There's quite a few actually in the human resources and payroll area. A few in the field services. And in business intelligence, we looked at quite a few of these actually in the demos. There's a lot of them here. Hope you'll take advantage of these. And finally, in the system manager and workflow area, there's a few enhancements here as well. A lot of these enhancement features you'll be able to take advantage of right away. If you want some assistance with those, please give us a call.